clinically, there's a lot of things you can talk about. Talk about the hamstring. It's uh, very common, obviously. A lot of hamstrings, three, um, a lot of tears, um, and there's a number of different reasons depending on the sport why that might happen. Just simple overload, uh, like a sprinter, when it's a very forceful motion. When it's a distance runner, it can be from fatigue because they're not using other muscles, they're not getting enough contribution from other muscles in the lower chain. Um, but regardless, you have to palpate it, diagnose that it's a hamstring strain, and then come up with a treatment plan based on what the dysfunction is. So, um, when you're palpating, positioning is important because if you find what you want to what you want to work on while you're helping, it's nice to be able to go directly into treatment in that position without having to take your hands off the body and reposition yourself and find where you want to go again. Um, but before we get started, with hamstring strains, a lot of the times uh, return to play is difficult because of recurrence of injury. Um, and some of the research has shown that for a uh, smooth return to play, you've got to essentially load the hamstring, not necessarily to break up the tendinopathy or uh, to change tissue integrity, but just to increase the tensile the capacity of the muscle before you get back into quick changes in direction, like jumping and hopping, that sort of thing. So there's some simple ways to essentially load, um, some more aggressive than others. One of the classic ones is to have the person kneel down and pin down their heels and let them slowly lower themselves towards the floor. A lot of people can't do that. The load is high and they get cramping. Um, so you can make it a little easier just with a single leg deadlift. Have them stand weight bearing on the affected leg. So if I had an injured left hamstring, have them stand on that left hamstring and you're slowly lowering yourself towards the floor. So you can have them hold a medicine ball or a kettlebell and have them for a slow five count, just slowly lower themselves to the floor. So you're eccentrically lowering the weight bearing hamstring, but you're also working on stability single leg stability for any type of runner or uh, athlete that's in a single leg situation. So having them, teaching them not to drop their hip, and not round up the back, and your hip hinging, keeping a stable base here, and just move forward. And if there's a load, you're gonna have more, more uh, uh, force put on that hamstring. Another way you could do it is have them laying on their back with their feet up on a on an exercise ball. Pull either one legged or two. You probably start with two feet and then work your way to one. Having them pull the ball in, but again hinging, no movement through the core, and just hinging at the knee. So as they lift, the only thing that bends is the knee joint. Yeah. So you have to lift your bum up and over the ball, and then slowly return it to the starting position. So the eccentric load when you're when you bring it back out. And you eventually get to one foot at a time, and it's a it's a lot of fun. Uh, contractions in the hamstring. Um, and then files is another good way to, to rehab the hamstring. So any type of plyometric work, whether it's single leg hops, box jumps, anything to uh, mimic the sport that you're trying to get back into. So anyways, let's get into palpation. 